Well, welcome everyone to uh, the first of uh, what I hope to be uh, will be panel presentations each semester by a number of site supervisors who would like to talk about their internship opportunities for the following semester. For this very first session, we have four presenters, and I will be introducing them separately, but I'd just like you to uh, get an idea of who will be talking to us tonight, uh, Rudy Barreras. Uh, of Western University of Health Sciences, and Cynthia Johnson from Natividad Medical Center, Christina Fidler of Museum of Vertebrate Zoology, and Diana Wakamoto uh, from the CSU East Bay. Diana is kind of special to us because she went through our uh, QUT Gateway doctoral program, and we're very proud of her. Uh, you also see on the screen, I'm Pat Frank down there at the bottom, but you also see on the screen on the right, Melissa LaFranchise. She's our Swiss student research assistant that put together this entire uh, panel presentation. So thank you so much, Melissa, for that. And uh, I'm going to move right to our very first presenter, Rudy, who will uh, introduce his uh, topic. And also, I'm not sure we have Francis' name here, Rudy. So is Francis with us as well? No, it's just me tonight. Okay, well then you can take it away. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, my name is Rudy Barreras. I'm the marketing and outreach librarian here at Western at the Harry K. and Philip Pomerantz Library. Uh, Francis, uh, Francis Chu is the uh, associate director of uh, reference and outreach here at Western University Pomerantz Library. So between the two of us and the other three, two reference librarians that we have on staff, we kind of group supervise or supervise depending on the on the uh, the how would you put it the project that uh, any of our people come in and uh, intern under so it depends on uh, what project you'll be working on who exactly um, is um, your direct supervisor so to speak um, but it mainly all uh, finally gets filed by Francis the uh, associate director if you want to go to the next slide I appreciate it thank you so this is the, a picture of the Harry Kane Philip Pomerantz Library here at Western University of Health Sciences. For those of you who don't know, uh, Western University is a uh, medical institution. So we have a variety of different uh, disciplines here, uh, every, ranging everything from DOs, or uh, Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine, to uh, pharmacists, veterinarians, uh, optometrists, podiatrists, uh, nursing, uh, the allied health uh, field, uh, I know I'm missing someone, pharmacy I believe I may, may have mentioned, as well as we've started a new graduate college of biomedical science uh, that's working towards a PhD program. So the library is located at one end of the campus. Uh, the campus actually takes place, if any of you are familiar with Pomona, uh, the downtown area of Pomona, California. So we occupy about five blocks, the university does. The library anchors one end. The new buildings anchor the opposite end with the students going in between the two. As you can see there, uh, we have the tagline of we are more than our four walls. That actually comes from the fact that we have um, a lot of distance programs, of uh, the nursing program is distance. We also have a remote site in Oregon that we have to uh, service our students up there as well. So we have a lot of distance programs, so we have a lot, of, as a result, a lot of electronic journals, a lot of electronic databases, and, uh, and e-books that have to be managed. So as well as the reference department is also heavily involved in uh, instruction and education. So we are spending quite a bit of time outside of the brick and mortar of the library and dealing with the, um, and associating with the faculty, students and staff of Western University. If you would like to go to the next slide, please. So here at Western, specifically in um, the Pomerath Library, there are a lot of different tasks that, uh, as Fran laid out here, we laid out here, that we need help with. We can always use another helping hand on any of these. We had actually just recently, I believe he's uh, here, uh, Tom uh, Daly was our last intern that we had, and he helped us tremendously on live guides and tutorial creation. Uh, he really took us in a different direction that we weren't um, expecting, and it turned out wonderfully. So we're actually getting ready to institute some of the um, things that he put together for our live guides 
and roll that across the board. But as you can see, we have live guides, uh, we have tutorials that we're always constantly happy to work on and upgrade and change. Uh, Obviously, as I said, I'm the marketing and outreach librarian. We have just uh, uh, forayed out into doing surveys uh, on a more systematic level. So we just finished a walking survey. We, I just crunched the data on that. We'll be going into focus groups and a longer survey based off of that. And we're doing a lot of data-driven marketing and uh, service uh, outreach with that. So we are doing a lot of that. We always are doing more and more promotion. We can't promote enough of the library services and the library's uh, different resources. So we are we have finally gotten our, our, little, our little hands onto some digital media. So we're actually able to have uh, on LCD monitors throughout campus uh, the ability to advertise our, our material. So we've gone out to that. We're publishing promo promotional material. We have a Facebook page. So we're always doing social media. And so obviously, whoever interns here will help out with the students, the faculty, the staff. And we also have collection assistance. So we're always looking about that and looking into anyone uh, to help us with that. It's a great way to get a chance to really get to know cross-disciplinary, or as we're doing here on campus, interdisciplinary communication. So this is a great way to get your hands into the medical uh, instructional field and just different disciplines. You may go to a, wind up in a different university or college that only has one, but you will have had access or exposure to them here at Western with the different disciplines we have. Next slide, please. So obviously, customer service skills are a must. We would like you to be technologically savvy. You bring your technological innovations to us, we're really happy to look at them, integrate them, and say, good job, well done. Um, obviously, we work in a team. Uh, the reference and outreach team is very close. We're a very tight-knit team, as Tom can attest to. So we're always open to working as a team and the ability to learn quickly, pick up stuff, and we'll let you, we'll let you run with it. Obviously, as Fran mentioned there, friendly and personable helps. Um, we will, um, we have the ability here on campus to introduce you to the faculty through different programs or uh, instructional sessions that are available to faculty and staff. We will, we've actually in the past taken our interns with us so that way they can be exposed to um, the other faculty and how we learn as faculty and staff at Western University to teach the students or expand our skills. So we take that, that with them so that way they get even more exposure uh, to uh, instructional material or instructional, um, I'm drawing a blank, instructional, um, oh, anyway, I'll, I'll come back to it later. <laughs> so anyway, if you want to go to the last slide, um, if you want to or you're, if you're interested in interning here at Western U at the Pomerantz Library, feel free to contact either Francis at uh, f2 at Western U or uh, reference at westernu.edu. We'll be happy to set up a meeting, get to know what skills you have, what we, how we can help you, and how you, you can help us. And we look forward to working with you. And I am done. Thank you. Thank you, Rudy. I have one question prompted yes. by what you had said about the way you work. Are you looking for a virtual intern or an on-site intern or a combination of the two? We like on-site, but we will take a, a hybrid, uh, either virtual and and uh, on-site. Uh, on I think totally virtual might not be enough because there's things that we'd like to expose you to here at the library. However, I believe Francis would be uh, uh, amendable to a hybrid where they come in and they, if they're able to do work. Some of the programs that we work with um, are only on specific terminals in our office. So if there's a program that isn't like, um, I believe Tom worked with Viewlet Builder when he was here. Uh, we only have it licensed for a specific terminal here at the library. So in order for him to work on the tutorials, he would actually have to come in and physically work on it. So in those particular instances, that's when they would have to come in. Okay, very good. That's just something the students can make a note of. Thank you very much. Thank you. And then uh, what I'll do is move on to the next speaker, and uh, we'll hold our questions till the end unless something like that pops up again.
Uh, but our next speaker is Cynthia Johnson from the Citadad Medical Center. And Cynthia, you can take it away. Thank you very much, Dr. Frex. Um, so let's begin. And so many hats. So you want to be a medical librarian, I mean a special librarian, or a director of a small rural library, I mean a director of a small academic library, I mean an embedded librarian in a large teaching facility. How about, I mean an information literacy librarian, a research librarian in a pharmaceutical company, how about a technology librarian? Whichever hat speaks to you now, you will, I promise you, at one point in your career or another, wear them all. Your internship will be at Natividad Medical Center in sunny Salinas. Yes, it's sunny Salinas. Natividad Medical Center is a safety net hospital where we're providing care to all residents regardless of their ability to pay. It is, only the teaching, it is the only teaching hospital on the Central Coast, and it is nationally and internationally recognized for its family medicine residency program. We're a one-man band. We have a small library with mostly medical journals, medical textbooks, and reference books, a small computer lab with seven computers for medical staff and student research, and a world of information at our fingertips through accessing our online databases. One librarian, that's me, serving a community of 900 medical professionals, serving a community of 150,000 hardworking constituents in John Steinbeck land, where the land is green gold, everything grows. An agriculture culture, a multilingual population, so only English is required for this internship, and where family means everything, no matter what the language. We're going to be doing special projects. If you look at the bottom here, and I mean, oh my gosh, one man band and I need help. We're doing new inventory, new automation, a new website in Drupal. We need public relations, database evaluations, training materials, surveys, everything that we could possibly do for a library we're going to be doing in the next six to nine months. So which hat are you interested in today? You can help us with reference or one of those wonderful special projects. And what is required of you or what do we want from you? We want your attention to detail. You're willing to take the time to produce quality work over quantity. And most important, at least in my library, thinking outside the box. All level of students are welcome. So, hey there you, Red Hat in the fourth row, Natividad Medical Center wants you. And you can contact us um, through me at Natividad by email or in person. If you have any questions here online or offline, just ask. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. And then to be clear, are you looking for on-site interns, virtual interns, or hybrid? We're looking for on-site. Um, you really need to be with the people on the floors, with the staff, with the residents, with the students. I think that experience is the greatest for any intern. And um, I hope we can get one of you guys to join us. Excellent. Thank you. And then uh, we'll hold our questions again and move on to uh, Christina Sibler, who will uh, introduce us to the Museum of Vertebrate Zoology. Hi, and, and thank you again for, um, for having me. So uh, just a little bit about the museum. The Museum of Vertebrate Zoology is located at UC Berkeley, uh, so it's on campus in the Valley Life Sciences Building. So if you are in the Bay Area, we're obviously very centrally located to BART and to all of the major bus lines in the East Bay. And the museum was founded in 1908, but 
didn't really have a formal uh, repository in place. Uh, it received a clear grant, that's the Council for Library, uh, Council of Library and Information Resources, and uh, it received a hidden collections grant from that, um, that body uh, a year and a half ago. And so I was brought on to help formalize the repository and put in place some basic infrastructure for supporting the research at the museum. Uh, the museum itself has roughly 640,000 specimens. So um, I'll just mention now it's, a, it's definitely um, important that if you are uh, uncomfortable around animals, um, especially specimens, that this might not be the best place for you. But, uh, and I should also note that I myself am, am not a biology major. But I found myself uh, fascinated by the work at the museum and a similar natural history museum. So please don't be, don't look at vertebrate zoology and think, oh, that can't be for me. It, if you're interested in history and if you're interested in archives, I think there's a lot of amazing opportunities that are repository. Um, so here is a, just a quick description of uh, what the kind of research that we support, and we really get people from, from everywhere, from small wildlife societies in the, in the area to, um, to researchers who are looking at uh, lead poisoning and, and condor populations over the span of 100 years. So, I mean, the, the, the range of research, I think, is, um, is interesting, and I'm, I feel like I'm always learning something new. Uh, so you can imagine with having this, this task of building this repository, we're really building this from the ground up. I don't have a mission statement that's, you know, decades old to fall back on. We really had to work hard to put together our processing manual, our mission statement, and all of these things I think that we sometimes take for granted in established institutions. We're affiliated with the Bancroft Library. So uh, we do have some support through them for some basic documentation, but otherwise what I really am looking for are students who are um, ready to roll up their sleeves and, um, and get into some of this material and, and help make it available. Uh, the biggest thing about this grant is really exposing the, uh, the collections that we have. And um, it's, 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 a pretty, um, it's pretty rich material. Our, the majority of our collections are comprised of field notes, and so researchers go out into the field. Uh, so if you um, are field notes, so researchers go out in the field, they, they, they observe what they see, they basically write down these formal conditions of a moment in time. And so if we have this record from 100 years ago, we can do surveys now to see how populations have changed. And that's the kind of material that we have that I think is so interesting. So if, if you're interested in that, um, if you're interested in the history of California, these are the kinds of tasks that we have. So I want to make a point that we have two very specific internships. We have one for somebody who has taken, um, uh, so this one, this one is for somebody who has not taken the archives class. If you're just curious about archives, maybe you have a, an interest in history, um, this is the internship for you. I get you started with some easier things like rehousing historical photographs, and then we move on to creating box lists of some of our collections that we may not get to right away, but we want people to know about it. And um, we're, we're utilizing this new feature out of the OAC, it's the Online Archive of California, to create collection records without necessarily processing an entire collection. I think it's a good practice to understand what a the finding aid structure is without having to go through the whole process. So I think that would be a really valuable um, tool and uh, experience for, for a student who's somewhat interested in archives. Uh, so again, looking for someone who's willing to get their feet wet and who's enthusiastic. That's, I, want, I, I, I want our interns to be engaged and excited and, uh, and to share our discoveries. We're always excited. We have a Facebook page and a blog, and um, we do encourage all of our interns to, to participate in that. 
so that's that's the first internship, and that is an on-site internship to be there and to just learn about what working in an archive is all about. And then our second internship is a processing intern. So this will be taking a medium to large collection and going through all the steps for processing that collection. And I help you every step of the way. We have this very um, well choreographed and, uh, and we work really hard, hard on our um, documentation for this. So if you are hoping to get um, a collection under your belt and to put on your resume, um, this would be a good opportunity. We use Archivist Toolkit and I, I help you process that finding aid into its ex an encoded EAD file out of Archivist Toolkit and massage it into a file that will be acceptable onto the OAC. So you'd get EAD experience, XML experience, Archivist Toolkit experience and all the other steps that are involved in processing. I should mention that both of our internships are paid. This internship is paid at, at a slightly higher level because it does require a course. It requires the archives course. And if, you, um, if you've taken preservation, that's, that's even better. So uh, those are, um, those are the, the two internships. Uh, I do like this photo of the, I forgot I had put this condor photo in. I think condors have been on my mind and they're not really my favorite bird, but um, I do like that photo. Uh, so uh, student qualifications, uh, an interest in natural history or biology is, is helpful, but again, absolutely not required. Like I said, I was an English major. Um, I kind of fell into this through my own internship. I did my internship at the uh, California Academy of Sciences. I graduated from SLIS in 2010 and um, it was a very important internship and I, I'm really glad that I did it and I fell into this amazing niche. So um, I, I am the poster child of how important your internship is and how things um, can be very fruitful from that experience. I do prefer decent handwriting skills. Uh, I'm very, um, I'm very compassionate towards left-handers. My husband's left-handed, and um, I, I will accept not so decent handwriting skills as long as it doesn't look like psycho killer handwriting, which I've experienced, and that can be hard. This, this handwriting, you're, you're writing on folders that are supposed to last for years and years. So decent handwriting. Is, um, is a big part of it. Enthusiasm and curiosity, that's a big deal. Um, I, there's no, I, I, I guess everybody wants that. Previous candidates developed attachments to their collections. Uh, we had Nancy Rink is processing um, the Robert Stebbins collection. He was a herpetologist who wrote a field guide for um, reptiles and amphibians on the West Coast, and he just died. And uh, while she was processing, she was actually almost finished when he died. And so she has is looking into ways of um, describing and and saving all of the memorials and obituaries that have popped up on, online. There's a Facebook memorial page about this herpetologist. So now we're looking into how do we save this and put this into the finding aid? And it's really fascinating. And I, I think she was, I think she was pretty crushed when she heard that he died. I think we all get very attached to the people that we process. They become so real to us. So um, I'm looking for other people who are, to, who are open to those kinds of experiences and making connections in history. Uh, innovative ideas, um, that's something that we're doing with this collection. Uh, how can we connect our specimen data, our maps, our field notes, all this data into um, something that's maybe even the next step for finding aids. I'm always looking for how can finding aids be more dynamic. So um, I'm always looking for people who are interested in that too. Uh, so here's my contact information. Um, and, and the requirements. So please, um, if you're at all interested, 
uh, do contact me. We're uh, we're always looking for somebody who's who's just kind of curious about what goes on at the museum and in its history. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. And so I do get from that that again we are looking at individuals who uh, are able to come on site and. Uh, all of the um, options so far have sounded fascinating, so I appreciate your presentation. And we'll move right along to the uh, last one, but not least, Diana, who will talk to us about CSU East Day. So go ahead, Diana. Thanks, Pat. Um, so thank you all for having me, and I'm so glad to hear about all these wonderful internship sites. Almost makes me want to do another internship myself. So um, as Pat said, I am. I work at California State University East Bay as one of the library faculty members there. Um, and uh, we are looking for on-site um, interns. And just to give you a little background of um, the university libraries at East Bay, so we, our main library where your internship would be is located in Hayward, um, California. So just a few BART stops down from um, Cal Berkeley. And um, our university library has a very central teaching mission because we are a teaching university. Um, and our library faculty all teach two credit information literacy courses um, that are required for our first year students to graduate. So that's what most of our interns focus on. Um, and it's also, we focus on our reference philosophy is part of our teaching opportunity. We have 12 library faculty members at the moment. We're a very collegial faculty, and we love it when um, students want to intern with us. So a little background on our internship. Um, it is an instruction and reference internship. So if you would like to have experience um, teaching, helping to teach a credit level information literacy course, and you'd like experience serving at an academic reference desk, this internship is for you. Um, and you can come and help us fulfill our teaching mission and share your ideas on teaching, learning, and librarianship. Um, so the internship was created to provide experience in reference and instruction to help us um, learn from you and you to learn from us new ideas um, for, uh, from enthusiastic engaged graduate students. Um, as I said before, it's on the ground and in person at our Hayward campus mainly. Um, we do have the option of doing a slight hybrid so you can do some of the work because uh, we do teach online as well for online modules, but we really um, like to have our intern on the ground in Hayward so you can be really come integrated into our faculty unit here. Um, so some of our interns do work with me. I'm the site supervisor for the overall um, internship program. Um, you'll be paired with a faculty member or perhaps two faculty members who are teaching. Um, we're on quarters, so for spring, your spring uh, semester, you would overlap with our winter and spring quarters, which is why you might uh, work with more than one faculty member. And you get to help with lesson prep, um, delivering lessons. Uh, you get help with grading, but you'll never be just having to do all the grant work of grading. Um, you also get the opportunity to work at our reference desk, which can be quite busy, um, especially in the middle and the end of the term. And you also have the opportunity for doing informational interviews with other library faculty members and staff members so you can get a really good overview of what it's like to be an academic librarian. Um, and so this is more than just a TA position. You really um, get to learn about being a faculty member. Um, in the CSUs, all the librarians are faculty members, which is really wonderful. So you can get to learn to see if this is something that you really want to do. Um, everybody's really into talking with our interns and helping you um, grow and learn, and we learn so much from our interns as well. So student qualifications, um, obviously because a lot of your internship will be in teaching, we would hope that you have a strong interest in gaining classroom teaching experience. Um, also, if you've taken the reference course and or the information literacy seminar, that's very helpful but not required. Um, also, if you have interest in creating learning modules, online tutorials, and things of that nature, we do a lot of that. So we have reusable material that we all share. That is wonderful. And obviously, as everyone else has said, a willingness to learn and being public service oriented is really key. Um, our past interns have been absolutely wonderful. Um, 
and have done fantastic projects for us. Um, they've created um, games to use in our classroom on copyright to actually make copyright uh, fun to learn about, um, updated uh, library guides, helped with course-related instruction both in the classroom and online, um, come into our one session um, uh, embedded information literacy sessions for upper division courses as well. Um, so basically, if you are good humored, public service focused, um, serious about helping, and you have a love or you think you might have a love of teaching, this internship is for you and we would absolutely love to have you. So if this sounds like something that you're interested in, you can contact me. Um, my email and phone is up there and you just have to to send in a letter of interest and your current CV to my email address and then we'll set up a time for an informal interview so you can ask more questions and decide if we are the right internship site for you. So um, thank you again for having me uh, talk with you and I hope that some of you will consider um, Cal State East Bay as your internship opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. And I'm going to move right over to this slide right now and uh, you can see the images of the speakers and also uh, the institutions they represent and their names and uh, we're open now for questions. So if you have any questions at all on any of these internship opportunities, you can raise your hand uh, or you could just type the question in the chat area. What if the student is graduating when in December or so uh, then uh, as far as SLIS is concerned you can't be part of our internship program. Um, you have to be an enrolled student. Uh, the, I'm going to uh, let uh, Christina answer that one. Seema, Christina in the chat area you see a question about hours and days of the week. Right. Um, so I, I work uh, I have a very interesting schedule. I work Monday through Thursday. I work half days in the morning. I do work all day Wednesday and every other Friday. Now, I don't expect you to remember that or to be um, uh, to be able to do that, but it is good that in the beginning we do have overlapping hours. So I'm basically there every morning um, before between 8.30 and 1 o'clock. So once we get the hang of things, we always have paid staff there throughout the day, every day. So um, once once we get more familiar, you you are able to be there. When I'm not there, but there will still be somebody there to answer questions. Um, but typically, I try to work it out for my schedule. And we do accept volunteers. So if you are graduating, but you do want an experience um, like this, uh, we do take volunteers. Thank you, Christina, and that's a good point. Although SLIS doesn't uh, become involved in volunteer opportunities, um, we uh, do believe that it's very important for you to have experience and volunteer experience is also a valuable, something good to put on your resume and a great way to network as well. So keep that in mind. I'm going to go to the uh, next question. Uh, Julie asked uh, for Cynthia to uh, have some information from you two about the hours and days. Hi, um, this is Cynthia. Uh, I'm here from 8.30 to 5, Monday through Friday. Um, the internship can be mornings, afternoons, the whole time. Uh, I'm very flexible. Again, it is important um, to be um, together uh, as, since it is a solo librarianship uh, library. Um, the best mentoring that will go on um, is going to be um, working together. So, um, but I am flexible. I don't know how many hours are required in an internship to get credit for it. Um, that, that hasn't actually been outlined to me, but uh, I'm more than happy to work out whatever is comfortable. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. And for all of you, our students work 45 hours for each credit that they're pursuing. However, they must sign up at least for two credit courses. 
three credit or four credit. So most of our students work 135 hours during one term to earn three credits. That, that seems to be the norm. Uh, and the, we like to say it should be fairly even during the semester so that uh, they can get done easily without a rush at the end. However, uh, that schedule you work out with the intern, you're not involved. And if there's time when it's slower for you or if the intern needs to take off or something, uh, the two of you would work on that. We, we don't become involved in that. Uh, and I see a question there for uh, Rudy. Um, and it's about uh, work with veterinary librarians and uh, is there a way to specialize? So I will give the uh, mic to you. Rudy. Thank you. Uh, Emily, we actually do have a, each of us are liaisons to different colleges, one or two colleges. So we do have a veterinary liaison. Uh, so you would be very be easy for you to shadow this li liaison. Uh, she spends a lot of time in the College of Veterinary Medicine, talking with the faculty, talking with the staff, working with them. She meets with the students on a regular basis as well the, during their grand rounds, uh, the first and the second year students. So she does spend quite a bit of time over in the College of Veterinary Medicine. As for specializing, I'm not too sure what you would do to specialize in that area other than uh, the exposure and learn uh, the collection that we have, the special needs that go along with our uh, veterinary students. And also, our veterinary program is uh, different than Davis's program. Ours is a pure problem-based program. So as a result, the veterinary students spend, I would have to say, anywhere from two to three times the amount of time at the library uh, doing research than the other programs do. So they are heavy, heavy library users, and we see them on a regular basis. So you, to specialize in veterinary, um, veterinary librarianship, uh, you could shadow our, our liaison and talk to her and really uh, get to know uh, how she works with the students and faculty and staff. Thank you. Uh, and do we have any, they're all very interesting opportunities, aren't they? Do we have any other questions or do you have any comments that you'd like to make? Uh, again, enter it in the chat area or uh, raise your hand if you'd like to take the mic. Well, I'm sorry, my button turns off on me <laughs> often. I just want to thank again all the students who attended, the presenters who presented, and uh, I wanted to say that the link to this presentation will go out in the morning to all of our students so that they can listen to it if they were interested and were not able to attend this evening. And eventually we will also have a webcast made of this so that uh, it is more easily accessible to other students. They won't have to go in to collaborate to listen to it. So uh, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, I appreciate your attending and uh, 